Hello, my fellow geekies. How you doing? How Wednesday is treating you? If you are in the Midwest and if you can get your head out of this, then this no. I hope your internet is working because in my case, I was without electrical and internet all weekend. And believe me, for somebody who is hyper connected, who have one, two, three, four, five, six <laughs> monitors, tell them no internet and not electrical is the same to take the toys off a kid. So we are live and all the streaming. And how you doing, my business partner? Uh, on crime, in crime, on crime. I don't know. You're my in business crime. partner. <laughs> yeah, great, great. In the middle of the week, yes. Yeah, you're the only crazy one who follow all my craziness. I adore you for that. <laughs> so, Abraham Lincoln would it be uh, having a birthday on um, February 12, but February 12, which is to do Cupid and Love. Why? Because we have some Valentine. To me, it's like, uh, I don't believe in some Valentine, but for the people who does, we're going to be talking about the story of Cupid, because uh, you told me, Elba, they have two meaning, no? Yeah, it has two meaning. It depends in the in the mythology that you are looking for, and it has a, a, his own meaning, it depends the mythology. Yeah. yeah, most people doesn't know that we have Greek, Roman, and Nordic mythology. Like Thor, mm -hmm. for example, is from the Nordic oh mythology. Um, and uh, Cupid, it's coming more from the Greek mythology or the Roman mytho myth uh, mythology. So, yeah, we are, everyone in this team is a geek level up. <laughs> so this Friday, we're going to talk about uh, the story of Cupid the different stories and we're going to talk about the five uh, love language and we're going to do the quiz together we actually did it with the team on monday and uh, let me tell you um all of us have the same result with like one or two percent different it was freaky like it yeah. happened when we did the mbti the by the way like i told you uh, we didn't have electrical or internet on Friday, and it was funny. I wasn't expecting on Saturday people send an email saying like, "Hey, I have my coffee ready. I just turned on your YouTube, and you are not there. What happened? It like I'm sorry. <laughs> Life happens. There's nothing that we can do with that. <clears throat> and no. my backup internet didn't work either. So thank you, Verizon, for not working either. But we're going to talk about MBTI in a couple of next weeks. But we're going to talk about the five love languages on Friday, on Friday, and we're going to put the five love languages, and we're going to show you features in your face who can determine and show you those five love languages. But the funny part is we're going to do it together. Be patient because it's going to take like five to eight minutes. So you need to... Yeah, well, almost. <laughs> so if you have the chance to do the love languages before the show and you want to repeat it live, more than welcome. But I'm going to share my screen with my love language. I'm going to reply my own questions and you're going to need to be doing your own. So are you ready, Elba? Yes, I'm super ready. Oh. Okay, we start having people and we're going to share the screen. We are YouTube, we are LinkedIn, and we yeah, have yeah. Facebook and we have the share screen. So oh. we are good to go. Don't laugh. Uh, you know what? what? I'm going to put I'm going to put you to do this. I'm going to okay. put you to do this for me. So I'm going to make you to do manage the technology. Believe me, you're not going to like it. it so was. the last week on tuesday we did the web uh, the webinar that it was face rating profiling intro one it was amazing we have a lot of people and actually we did it longer than an hour uh, mm -hmm. don't ever ever believe us when elba and i to get together and we says that we're going to do it in an hour mm -hmm. never happened yeah. but for the ones who didn't uh have the chance to participate if you go to the banner humanbehavioralab.com and you go to school, you're going to be a section where all the webinars there are uh, pre-recorded and they're prepay or pay webinars so you can see it. So the good news is all these webinars are going to be recorded live with audience. But if you miss it, you still can see it. The next one is going to be the language of negotiation. And we are going crazy because 
the hostage negotiation then we are evaluating is so long, but we need to go and narrow. So we're going to be talking about we are going to run a real life scenario. This is going to be Tuesday, February 23rd. 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, it's a live webinar and you can go to humanbehaviorlab.com dash webinar or just go to Human Behavior Lab. You go to the bottom and you're going to find all the webinars that we have. And again, for the ones you webinars you lose or you couldn't uh, participate, you still can see it on demand. So Abraham Lincoln face rating. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the story. Abraham Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809, and he died on April 15, 1865. Was an American stuntman and lawyer who served as the 16th president of the United States from 1961 until he was assassinated in 1865. What most people doesn't know about Abraham Lincoln and that he was well known, fascinated, and practiced face reader. Believe it or not, in 1960s, when he was preparing for his presidency, photography come up as one of the things that the and the technology first. One of the things they on the 1700s and 1800s and in the beginning of 1900 we have there were there were the sign first and technology technology first where people present their new inventions. Now we're going from uh, a, from BlackBerry that I still miss you BlackBerry to a cell phone where you can talk, take picture, and all your life is depend. I cannot even open my garage if I don't have my cell phone. It's ridiculous. And I found out this weekend that I ended up turning around my car so I can charge my cell phone because I realized I cannot talk to anyone. I cannot open my garage. I couldn't even manage the thermostat of my yeah. house if I don't have my cell phone working. It was freaky. But in 1960s, Abraham Lincoln was fascinated by uh, the significance that a picture and a face make to others. So what he did, he hired a couple of photographers and he made himself to be photographed by himself with his family. And he did these post postcards and he hired people writing stories about him behind those pictures. They're, they were in lie, lies, but he used communication and the concept that we have to media. It was the Twitter for the 1800s. So behind each picture, he write like, the, hi, I'm Abraham Lincoln. I'm running for president in 1960s. Uh, this is my family. This is my wife. This is my son. Um, this is my story that I was coming from. So when he went to agriculture areas, he was uh, narrowing the language in a way that that people can feel identify. Now, when we went to the business side, when we went to the, uh, the, 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 the commercial side, his language was different. We need to remember that Abraham Lincoln was the first Republican. He's the one we own the taxes, so sorry people. And he was the one who abol abolished slavery. Now, we think that face reading it haven't been used before, but actually what Abraham Lincoln did is hire a physiognomist who was training him and make his face analyze. And actually the analysis of his face was published in a couple of journals and some journalists replicated that and just happened that Abraham Lincoln have features who made it the right president. You don't believe me? Well, just happened that the Harvard professor, Oliver Well Holm says, the picture tell no lies. And that is, was in the 18, 1860s, when Abraham Lincoln was using physiognomy and how likable his face was and all the features who make him a person that you can trust. So 
For the ones who doesn't know, for 18 to 20 years, I work in political consulting. And when I was talking about face reading and the inner circle of political consult consulting, face reading is really well known. Why? Because I didn't invent it. Actually, studying history, studying all the precedents, when I found out that Abraham Lincoln used physiognomy to determine how likable he was, and that's how he were he were uh, choose to be the candidate. I that that's when I bring face reading profiling to politics, and on top of that, a statement analysis and forensic analysis. Who, by the way, was used by Abraham Lincoln between 1859 and 1860s. Now. What happened with a person who take away our 16th president? John Wilkes Booth was born in 1838 and he was uh, no assassin. He was executed in 1965. On April 14, 1865, actor John Will Booth assassinated President Abraham Lincoln while he was watching the play Our American Cousin on 4th Theater in Washington, D.C. After 10 p.m., Booth entered Lincoln's private theater box and analyzed and shot the president with a single bullet on the back of the head. Although Booth had a broken leg when he jumped from uh, the, the picture that we use on the beginning of and to promote it is true. He jumped from the balcony and he managed to escape uh, the theater because everybody was so commotion to try to to what happened with Abraham Lincoln that nobody was paying attention. The person mortally wounded were carried to a jeep lodging house opposite to the theater where he spent all night. By 7.22 a.m. the next morning, he died. And this was the first president assassination. The second one happened a couple of years ago and was Garfield. And the last one that we have was Kennedy. We have an attempt assassination with Reagan, but didn't happen. And if you pay attention, bizarre Garfield, the people don't pay too much attention, Besides for the things that Lincoln did and Kennedy, they become martyrs. Now, after killing the President Lincoln, uh, Booth escaped and was on the run for 12 days. And the warning signs and most wanted were all over the United States. And he finally got caught and he was hung. Now, uh, Booth was an actor. And believe it or not, he was a really well-known actor. He was doing what we say today around $500 a day. And for that time, that was really, really a lot of money to be done by an actor. And he was a really good actor. Now, I always say, if you want to do something and you don't want to be portrayed as an exhibitionist, you're going to do it in private. If you pay attention to all the people who kill uh, prominent figures like Lennon, except Kennedy, that I don't want to go to the conspiracy theory, but Lennon, Lincoln, Garfield, uh, those are people, they did it in open, uh, in an open scenarios where people can see them. The, uh, on the memories that um, John Wilkes Booth wrote is that he wanted to start a movement. When it happened, the only movement he started was reinforce the politics that Abraham Lincoln did. So let's go to the reading of who was our 16th president of the United States. First Republican. And again, if you don't like to pay taxes, then we, we should have done this in April 16, where we need to pay taxes in the United States. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, people is showing like, what? Yes. Like, yeah. You know what? One of the things that we love about the lives is we can talk about body language. We can talk about microexpression. We can talk about statement content analysis, forensic analysis, personality type, face reading, face reading profiling. Uh, we can talk about face reading with mask. But through information to you with our context, at the end of the day, the idea is that we have fun together. Elba, what is your idea? Because you are my partner in this craziness. So don't leave me alone here. This is not only my idea. No, I, I think the same. I think when you when you have the context, you can understand what we say. 
So it's better we have all the, and even though you can learn a little bit more. So I think it's, it's, it's useful. Okay. So my love, I'm going to give you the first one. This yes, is Abraham Lincoln and 1846. What do you see here? And don't worry, we're going to go through uh, 1846 to 1860s, uh, 65 when he was assassinated. And after that, we're going to go with uh, John Booth. And we're going to be doing comparisons, uh, pictures when they were young and, and older, so you can see the difference. But this is the first one when he started getting to the politics. And by the way, he was from Illinois. Ah. Yeah, he was from Illinois. Oh, I yeah. I don't know how he deal with the 10 inches of snow with uh, oh, with no internet and electrical, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my love, what you see here and you want to point here. Okay, the, first of all, this picture was from the end of the of his 30s. So what, what I see here, the things that, that I can notice and the things that kept my attention was he was a person that can do things that no one else do it before. He knows what is missing and how to do it. And he has his own world. He has his own bubble, like like, like, like for another way to say it. He has an, his own bubble. So, and another thing that he, that I can see from him is that he was a person that he starts things and finished. He doesn't, he doesn't leave, he, he didn't leave nothing without concluding. And the other thing, I think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good one for me, a, a politician, but maybe can cause problems. Why? Because he said the things as the things are. He doesn't have filters. He is like, this is well, the Well, we way. need to remember he was a lawyer and he was a visionary and we know that he was a visionary in the beginning and we're going to show at the end what are the signs that you can look in a person who can be a visionary he has his own idea about certain things that need to be be done and how to get done and the truth to be told he modifies so many things there still are stuck like 100 almost 200 years later we still following and that is the reason we have an Abraham Lincoln uh, library in DC that, by the way, is one of the best libraries. Every time mm -hmm. that I went to DC or I'm going to DC, I spend hours and days on the Smithsonian and in the library. And you have the huge, even on the planet of the monkeys, you have uh, the Abraham Lincoln statue. And it's huge. You need to really like, wow. I forgot to put my oh, picture. I have a picture with me that I'm like five, seven <laughs> next to the Abraham Lincoln. I only feel his shoes, the how big the statue is. Okay, imagine me. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. <laughs> I, I need to I need to say something, don't kill me. The first time that I met Elba for the first time, I have this impression for her attitude and aptitude that she was like my height. So when I get out of the car and I pick it on the apron, like, oh, you're shorter. <laughs> And we start laughing. And like, what do you mean? I always was shorter. Like, no, I imagine you taller and bigger than you are. No, I'm short. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, you're taller. That's that's what it counts. Yeah. <laughs> if it's count for you. Yeah, it's count for me too. Don't worry. <laughs> so, my love, what else you see in this picture? Or you want me to go to the next one? That is 1957. Yeah, we can go to the next one. Okay, we're going to eight nineteen, like no, eighteen fifty-seven. The eighteen hundred doesn't exist for me. So wow, what a change, no? And don't worry, don't you don't get lost. You're gonna see the difference between the forties and the sixties on Abraham Lincoln on the last picture. Uh, I see a huge, huge change on the cheeks. Me too. And what the chicks are meaning? Okay, the chicks that well, the change that we see here on the chicks, he had a lot of things, uh, different things here. First, he he became a warrior. He became a fighter. He became a survivor, and he wants to be seen for the things that he he was doing at that time. To make more shocking, let's go back to the picture before. This is Abraham Lincoln. 11 years before the mm -hmm. picture that we're going to show you. 
So for the people who says the faces and features do not change, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to this part. You see the ear? Well, you're going to find something fascinating in how the size of the ears change it. 11 years later, this is the same man. I wouldn't believe it if I wouldn't see it. You know what? Another change that I saw was the eyebrows. Because they start, the eyebrows uh, start. I'm sorry. Alma is saying on YouTube, wow, I thought Elva was tall. <laughs> Thank you, Alma, but now I'm shorter. <laughs> Alma, we love you. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I, I'm tiny. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry, but I think it was like a funny comment. Yeah. There we go. That is, that is for you, my love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alma. Thank you to see me like that too. You see, it's your attitude and your aptitude. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, it's not a Napoleon Napoleon complex because we're going to talk mm -hmm. about Napoleon. And actually, he was 5'7". The point mm -hmm. that everybody was taller at that point and he was considered short. But actually, it was he ha was as high as I am. Anyway, go back. Okay, another thing, it was the eyebrows. You see, he start being like the, the one to start and finish things. But in this in this year, he, in, in this picture, he was the person that he doesn't like have like a fast, he doesn't start like really quick, but he can finish things. And he started being more managerial. Mm -hmm. uh, by the 1857, he started entering on the political arena. So he need to start being uh, seen as um, not only he was 6'4", like, holy cow. Bas I don't know if people play basketball at that time, but he was really tall. He was an intimidating man. But the way he started using the hair was taller, and he started using the, like, the bear wolf uh, beard, and he was framing his face. And those chicks show, oh. like, if you pay attention to all the pictures of the aborigines from any part of the world, you're going to find that they have those 45 degrees chicks. Yeah. And let's do the exercise together. There, let's put our finger where our chicks, we feel the, phone, the, 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 the bone started. Now, we're going to draw a line. In my case, I have... Uh, Terrible 45 degrees chick. Like, I'm a warrior. I'm going to chop your head if you betray me or if you get in my way. So this has 45. How we show this? You see where the chick start? Mm -hmm. And you see this? Mm -hmm. But he have something. Most people doesn't know that we can have three or more mm -hmm. chicks. What kind of chicks we find out on Abraham Lincoln by the 1857 Elva. We have, we find water chicks, sunken chicks, and protruding chicks. We have three. One of the things that people with protruding chick tend to have is a lot of attention from mm -hmm. others. Protruding chicks is here. It's like the chicks are her show, and like we call it the, the Hollywood star. Yes. Actually, a lot of Hollywood star, mm -hmm. you can see in this circle, a lot of Hollywood star, they put fillers to have the chicks there get more protruding. And they actually, they do this kind of makeup with uh, white powder to make mm -hmm. it more uh, flashy and pinky and paying attention. And it's something that started getting my attention, the divisionary lines. Divisionary. You see this line, we call it the burned out line. But when that burned out line have a two more burned, down, burned out line, that is this one and this one, and it start to make in a triangle, mm -hmm. we call it visionary. What happened before when he was only a lawyer? You can see the two lines of burned out, but he didn't still have the vision, the president that he become and that we had. So anything else you want to tell us about him in this picture or you want to go to the next one? You know, I, I was looking at the, at the eyelids. Oh, those change a lot. By the yeah. way, I still have my, somebody asked me, <laughs> you start have the Darth Vader? Like, yeah, I'm not going to start changing Geeky. She no. have this, 
human behavioral lab uh, cop. I have the Darth Vader. It's not going to happen. He have less neediness. He was yeah. less needy. He was like, okay, I want to be around you, but I need my time with myself. Mm -hmm. By the time that he become uh, a candidate and he become a possible uh, candidate for presidency, his eyelids getting more exposure. He become more human people oriented. Mm -hmm. What the eyelid exposure mean, Elva? It's the person that needs to be around with people. They reload his energy by being with others. So they need that. They they are the kind of person that if you had a bad day or something, they are going to notice and they are going to say like, what happened? You are okay. What happened with you? So they are more people oriented. Hey, Sarah. How are you doing, my love? Sarah is one of our students. Is my chick are really round? Um, do you want to answer? It's actually uh, um, face reading level four is completely level five. Um, the first two units are released tomorrow before we go into train the trainers. Uh, what are the round round chick? Why are you so likable, um, Sarah? Why, uh, why why people like? It? I'm good. Thank you. Really nice to see you here, um, Elva. What do you mean the uh, the round chicks that um, Sarah have? Like you are more when we have round features. It's like we are more likable for people. And we call like Santa Claus effect. Why? Because you like to people. People like you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and forgive me, Sarah, if I uh, um, read it and run, you have anything to do with uh, dealing with people, dealing with therapy and organic things. So uh, your chicks actually, that's because you don't have a warrior chicks doesn't mean that you're not a mm -hmm. fighter but it has to do with healing. And I'm sure, and I don't remember really good, but I think that you have on top of round chicks, you have healer chicks. Healer chick is people who is who have the ability to talk and the stamina to take care of others mm -hmm. and heal them from anything, can be emotional or physical. So nothing wrong. Mm -mm. She says, I am a nutritionist, what? therapist, healing the body. Hello. Yeah. So your cheeks are perfect, healing yeah. the body. Why? I told you, if I don't remember wrong, you have healer cheeks, meaning those cheeks are perfect for what you do. Nothing in your face is wrong or right. It yeah. has to do with the pattern that we choose in life. And you're a nutritionist, you heal in the body. So the path you choose has to do with your chicks. So congrats, Sarah. Yes. Don't change careers. You're in the right place. <laughs> okay. What else do you want to tell us? Or oh, we go into the next one, my love. We go into the next one. This is 1858. And what a change. Look at those ears. And he shaped his beard. Okay. This is one year different. He mm -hmm. went... Stop going with a crazy hairdo. Maybe he was in a pandemic and he couldn't cut his hair either. And that full burr wolf. I don't know how many of you look X-Men. Hello, guilty. Like the 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 the, the wolf, yeah. like the yeah. Wolverine. By the way, he's so sexy. Um, yeah. uh, not Abraham Lincoln. I'm talking about Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> I always, Wolverine. My mood. My mouth always getting me in trouble. <laughs> but he went to and he went a clean shape. Why? Because here what he was considering a candidate. And that when he start understanding that the way the other people perceive you is are the way that you need to show yourself. Uh, thanks to you, my love, for being here always and in all our life. So it's something that uh, when we were reviewing uh, the presentation with uh, Elva this uh, today at noon, it's something about the ears. What is about the ears that it's amazing and tell us why he was always thinking so much outside the box? Why? Because instead to do, in, okay, he started thinking outside the box and seeing and doing things that no one else did before, but he has his own world. He, if he does, if, if, if he was the kind of person that 
okay, I'm going to do this and this is going to work because this is my world and I'm going to make it work. Believe it or not, most people think that he was a pragmatical person, but he wasn't. You can no. see the earlobes. No. no, he was a dreamer, mm -hmm. but he was a doer. So you can find the same features in different people and you can have a serial killer or you have a person who revolutionized the world. Mm -hmm. And I do it and I'm going to repeat it more than once. I do presentations when I show the uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Hitler, mm -hmm. they have similar features. Now, the ones that were opposite who make that somebody was evil and somebody was looking for peace. But at the end of the day, both mobilize nations to do something and do things that yeah. nobody was thinking they can be done. So I'm not comparing Gandhi with Hitler. Let's be clear, because as soon as you open your mouth, people come and punch on the throat. What I'm saying is there are features in your face. It's how you complement in those features who made you an evil or you make you a saver of the country. I have Indi Indian friends who doesn't agree that uh, Gandhi was so good, but another topic for another mother. So <laughs> what do we have at 1858? You know what? I was looking at his eyes and they go deep. They're See? sunken. They're sunken, and he, meaning that he start observing everything around him. So and by the he, way, he doesn't want it to be seen. No, when somebody something is sunk it like his cheek was sunk it, his eye starts sunk it, and not most people says that he have elephantiosis or he have any uh, some kind of degenerative disease because the legs were longer than the body. That means that he like to spend more time sitting the standing. People with short legs are moving all around like Elva. Elva oh. have short legs. Short legs and long torso. I have long legs to the point that uh, my first uh, salary was modeling as stockings and shoes and doing photograph for that. And I get paid a freaking a lot of money for it because how long and muscular my legs are. But he have long legs and short torso. What happened? You spend more time sitting. I can be sitting for 18 hour, 19 hours, no complaining. You make Elva to sit for mm -hmm. 19 minutes and she's going to punch in the face. Yeah. And Abraham Lincoln had long legs. So some people says he have elephantiosis. No idea. Uh, there are not a studies. Uh, nobody like exhumate the, the corp to do the studies. But the point is everything more public persona he become more sunk it he, he 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 started being doing and by the way he have a couple of tragedies on his life mm -hmm. he lost kids and Wait. i cannot imagine how hard it can be for a parent parent mm -hmm. to need to bury their own kids and that's and the sunken chicks start happen and the warrior chicks when he lost his first kid mm -hmm. and when he started going politics Actually, he used that. Some people says that he used that pain to make him him stronger, and in order to change things, um, not on the health issues, but on the way that the country was going. He used mm -hmm. his pain as a combustible to b make the things he did. What else yeah. you see? Or you want me to go to the next one? Oh, the managerial eyebrows are going all over the place here. And you see, you, you I, I can notice one thing here in his business business side on him. This is the business side. Yeah. On his lips, his upper lip is almost disappeared. And the lower you can have you can have four different lips, believe mm -hmm. it or not. That's Let's them. put it again. This is the business side, this okay. is the personal side. If you look at the upper lip, it's thicker. But if you look on the upper business side lips, it's thinner. Mm -hmm. The upper lip has to do with your emotions, has to do with your right brain. The lower lip has to do with business. How mm -hmm. funny and how you talk to others. The upper lip on the personal is thicker. On the lower is thinner. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened with the left one. It's all yours. It's, you see it's the difference? Yeah, it's, it's a total, it's a big, huge difference. The upper lip on the business side, it's thinner. And the lower lip is thicker, meaning that he start 
talking about his external things. He can convince you about what everything, which how uh, which idea that he have he had. So he can convince you about that, and he start putting his emotions and his feelings close to him because no one needs to know what's happening inside. So that's the that that's the change. Who makes sense with that? He was using his pain as a combustion. Mm -hmm. So these are two different pictures. Uh, the picture on the right um, is two weeks, two weeks or yeah. two months before he was assassinated. Two months. Two months. Yeah. Two months. Two and this is from uh, like seven or eight years before he was assassin. Uh, can you see the ears, how they change? Yes, he start to listen more. Okay, His ears become bigger. How are we going to compare this? Let's go to the 1908. What do I have it with 19? I should go and, t and check in my genealogical and my family what happened in 1956. <laughs> yeah, it's 1846. No, my mom wasn't born in that. I don't know. But what, what did I start with 1900? Anyway, 1846 <laughs> to 1865. Uh, can you see the ears? And I know maybe for the angle of the picture and the things, you cannot measure that this ear is, is smaller than this one. Yeah. And here he had two burnout lines, but you can see the triangle. It's yeah. amazing. It's one of the things that I don't like about string yard is they don't allow you to draw things like zoom, but zoom is not supporting here. So tomato, tomato. But you can see here, I don't know if you see with the cursor, like yeah. the triangle. You see the one burnout line, one line, another line. We call that what, Elva? The visionary line. What happened with somebody is a visionary? It's when someone can see things like deeper. He doesn't see the superface, the super... Uh, the surface. Surface. He's, he, he's, he saw the, the deep things. He can vision. He, ha he, he had vision about things. He knows where he can go. Another thing, it changed. When he was 20 years younger, he had a one deep line. One deep line is that depending how many lines you have in your forehead mm -hmm. and how deep are those line, lines is how many topics and how many things you specialize and concentrate. When he was a lawyer, he was a really good lawyer. But when he was president, you can see all the lines on the head. Why? Because he need to go deeper and a different things. And by the way, he didn't believe in anything yeah. until you prove it. Mm -hmm. When he was picking the people to work on his cabinet and working on his team, they send it all, the pile of resumes. They're like, okay, great, put everybody in the room. And he went one to one and says, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Guess what? He was reading their faces. Why? Because he didn't trust that anything in paper is good. Why? Because every everybody look good in paper. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that get stuck in my head when I read one of the many biographies that I read about him, that people didn't understand why he was the way he was. He was completely and, and utterly not a believer. You need to prove him in order to make it happen. But when you don't believe, it make you go deeper and research mm -hmm. more than most people would research. So he didn't believe absolutely anything. And by the way, by the time he was a president, his upper lip disappeared completely yeah. on both sides. Still oh. on the business side was a smaller, but you see how it changed? Yes. And the lower lip became more thicker. Yeah, it's, it's not only become, okay, because if you look on the picture on the left, it is thicker. But the difference with the, the lip on the right, it's become more cornacious, more like, uh, if you like, fillers. If this dude was on the 2000s, I would say he have fillers on the lower lip. The, by the way, I may have done this with some political 
I never gonna drop a name. You're gonna kill me, not gonna drop a name. But I have done that to men too. And they hit me. By the way, I have my own um, esthetician who does my Botox and fillers for my clients when they need it. So always you need to have your team. Yeah. So before we go into the person who assassinated Abraham Lincoln, remember, do not want to miss that. We already have 22 people registered. So like, woohoo, it's going to be a full house. The language of negotiation, we're gonna going to run a real life scenario. And in the last webinar we have, we have one of our dear hostage negotiators mm -hmm. and police and captain from uh, a division of the police. And she was on the webinar and she said like, I will not going to miss this one. So Tuesday, February 23rd, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to be talking about running a real hostage negotiation situation. And by the way, Texas, I cannot wait for October. I'm going to be doing the closing keynote speaking on the what? Texas hostage negotiation. I cannot wait because we're going to be talking about language and we're going to be talking about face reading. Oh, good to know. So let's talk about Joel Wilkes Booth, uh, face reading, uh, the man who assassinated Abraham Lincoln. We have 10 more slides. So, and oh my God, already we have been here talking for 40 minutes. Let's go. Okay. Believe it or not, some things that uh, Lincoln and Booth have on their face were similar. But it was one thing that it was the most significant. He not, he was, we, we, we debate today and he was emotionally or he was impulsive. And when we did the measurement with the face, uh, because those pictures are difficult to find, uh, we find out that he is impulsive. We have three zones. So if you go into the two bumps on the head, we did a webinar yeah. with Lena Cisco yesterday and I have everybody like touching the bump <laughs> on the head. It was funny yeah. to see right on the screen. Touch the bump of your head and put the fingers on your eyebrows. From your eyebrows to the tip of the nose and from the tip of the nose to your first chin, not the COVID chin. So <laughs> in this case, this person have, believe it or not, a small son one, a bigger zone two and an almost equal zone three has to do thinking, emotion, spending habit and money. That's what we why we spend like four hours training sales rep and like why you need to read the nose, why you need to read the nose has to do how much money they're going to spend. And the zone three has to do with doing. Now, Elba, tell me when I high in emotions and I'm a doer. I'm a feeler or I'm an impulsive person. What happened with that? I'm a feeler. When I'm high with emotion and a lower lowest part, like it's 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 smaller, I'm a feeler because I feel first. Yeah, but when I have a second zone that is the third zone that is I'm doing, it makes me impulsive because mm -hmm. I feel in, I'm doing. And after that, I'm going to my computer who should go first to think what we're doing. So that's the reason I think that the way, even though it was premeditated, how he killed Abraham Lincoln was impulsive. He was like to try to be a show off. Why? Because people with long son too is show off. They like shiny boy syndrome. They have this shiny boy syndrome and they're showers. They like to show mm -hmm. off. So he was an impulsive person. What mm -hmm. else you had to add for, in this case? You, you, I was looking and I was looking to the eyebrows and I think it's, they are like uh, thin. You can Let's see. go to the next one to see if best. Because to me are thin and straight. Me, for me Yep, yep. thin yep. and straight. Um, okay. Yep. You want to take thin or you want to take a straight? Which oh, one do you want to talk straight. about? Which <laughs> one? Straight. Go for it, my love. <laughs> okay. He needs facts and data. Go to the point. For him, it's like, this is white, this is uh, this is black, and this is yellow. That's it. No, I, don't need, I don't need more information. Just give me the information that what I need, and that's it. So go to the point. Don't go with stories. 
and go with bullet points so he can process the information better. We call it how, why, what. Yes. I'm and that is people that is emotional, they like no. facts and data, or they they're like not, academic studies? No, they like facts and data. They, in, in order to do the things that he, he, they has to do, they don't take in account the feelings. If they make a decision, it's because it's the decision that they they has to they they have to make, but they don't they don't put in account the, the emotions or the feelings about people. They put it apart. They go with the facts and the data. And by the way, he have the same kind of uh, exposure eyelids that Abraham Lincoln have in the beginning. He wasn't too clingy, but he need his time alone. But my part was the thin eye, thin eye, thin eyebrows. Yes. When you have thin eyebrows, either natural or because you plug it, when you have thin eyebrows, as you because you keep plugging and plugging and plugging hair. And I found out some pictures when he was younger, his eyebrows were thicker. So he was an actor, so he needed to portray different roles. Uh, and again, he was a really well-known actor uh, at the time. That's one of the things that surprised the people the most, that when they says uh, John Wilkin Boots, like, Wilkes boots like what he was a well-known actor what he will do that so thin eyelid thin eyebrows meaning they're really really critical with themselves that again he was an actor so kind of makes sense so here you're gonna see that the eyebrows change a little they were a little more pointy and this picture is for a couple a few times before he assassinated Lincoln. The picture before was uh, in his young years, but this is near when he assassinated uh, Lincoln. And he went with his eyebrows changed. Do you saw that? Yeah, I saw that. They, they get more pointy. They get a, they start getting more for the knowledge. Another thing, do you see the eyes? The yeah. inner counter, you draw a line, Mm -hmm. And the outer counter is the same line. Now, what happened in this one? They go down. He become pessimist. He sees problems in everything. Everything. Actually, they say that he become so obsessed with Lincoln when Brown was uh, hanged. And he, uh, because he was an actor, he had the chance to grab one of the uniforms and he was uh, mm -hmm. present during the execution of Brown. And that they, people say that change and mess it up his head and he become obsessed that Lincoln was the enemy. Who actually makes sense. He become pointy eyebrows. He become mm -hmm. like, I, I want the information. I want the, I want everything that I can consume. And he become voracious, reading absolutely everything that can be put in front of him. But at the same time, he become completely pessimist. He yeah. saw all the problems and absolutely every beauty. Doesn't matter how beautiful things there were inside, he seen negative. One of the things that I was reading, and I would say, if you want to know more about him and uh, the Abraham Lincoln assassination, this is one of the books that I keep in my nice time. People get freaked out. It's The Psychopath Whisper, The Sign of Those Without Conscience by Dr. PhD Ken Kill. Uh, chapter three, he talked about Garfield and Abraham Lincoln assassination. And his observation is that based on everything uh, um, the historians has wrote, uh, Booth was a psychopath. I'm not saying it. We went to a PhD who just happened to find out what are the traits who people who made psychopath. What I'm saying always, we are not therapists, but we're going to people who know more than we know. And believe it or not, we read two books with Elba to do this live today. So we went to the basic. Actually, I cheat. I listened to the audiobooks at the same time that I was reading <laughs> on the weekend. But that's that's one of the traits. He become obsessed. And if you see his mustache oh, change yeah. it too. A lot. You see the mouth? It's don't pay, but, don't um, pay attention to the hair. Pay attention to the mouth. If you draw a line between this point of the line, the mouth and you go direct, you're going to find out the mouth was uh, straight. Mm -hmm. The mustache was going down. 
Now, the second one, you're going to see the mouth start going a little down. Yeah, start getting down. Anything else before we go into the comparison between the assassin and the assassinate? I want to see the next one. So, Arahan Lincoln and John Wilkes Booth, 1865. Here we go. Obviously, Booth was way younger than Abraham Lincoln, but... He was 26, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see the widow's peak. We call that this call in Chinese face reading, and I had it in Marilyn Monroe habit. I'm not comparing myself with Marilyn Monroe. Let's be clear. <laughs> it's like It's like a point. Mm -hmm. So you have the ability to make other people see you or hiding on the corner both have the same they have the widow's pick where you can see where the hair start mm -hmm. and where the hair finish mm -hmm. but in the case of wilkes i talked to a friend who's a chinese face reader and says he have an m shape not only the widow's pick that in chinese face reading again it's not my turf I talked to a friend who does it, says you can see it in people who can, can tend to be violent or can then have to have aggressive tendencies. So this is the man who killed it. This is the man who was killed. Booth have low or high ears, Alwa? Low ears. Abraham Lincoln had? High. So Abraham Lincoln was a fast thinker. He was a visionary. Uh, he was a managerial. He won. He went to study absolutely everything, and he had a lot of interest. He stopped talking about about his feeling. Who make it? It can be consequences of losing kids. Now, give me a wrapper out and a boot. What do you think? If you need to do a like fast profiling in ninety seconds. What was uh what was the person that he needs time to think? Don't don't rush him. So I think that's why he can prepare everything because he he thinks first. He thinks about he needs to think, he needs the whole information. Now he was he needs the knowledge, he needs everything. Uh he doesn't believe in in, in what people say, and he expects problems, see problem in everything. And I think he doesn't, it's not that he doesn't talk, he hide his emotions, his feelings. So that's the thing that I can tell you about. Ah, and he was a, a linear thinker, step by step. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln was a creative person, <laughs> but was a linear thinker. So yeah. if you like what you see, again, Next webinar, The Language of Negotiation, we're going to run a real-life scenario on hosted negotiator negotiation Tuesday, February 23rd, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can go to the link below, humanbehavioralab.com, and you can go to the end of the website and go to webinars and register. Uh, we are designing evilly what we're going to do next. So, and if you miss uh, the last one we did last Tuesday, that was fascinated. People was blown right. away. Uh, you can go to human. Be uh, you can go to courses, uh, courses, and on Human Behavior Lab, and you can go and you can buy the past webinar with all the people that we have before. And if you have questions for me for uh, the American market or for the European market, you can write me to susan at humanbehavioralab.com. I reply to all my emails. Uh, Elba, if somebody wants you from the Latin American market, the Spanish English market, where you can they can locate you? You can write me to elba, that, uh, elba at humanbehavioralab.com. And I reply my emails too, yes. Okay, so uh, all the information that we get today, we had it um, documented. Actually, we yeah. find a couple of articles on internet talking about how Abraham Lincoln was fascinated uh, by um, uh, face reading. In that case, it was called physiognomy. What we're doing is face reading profiling, where we read your face and we determine your personality. The words we need to use is a little more complex. Our level four face reading is already out there. Level five, 
fi finally is going to be out there next week and we're going to have train the trainings on may only to let you know we are already having a waiting list so if you wanted to be accepted on train the train it i would say start writing start coming up and start sending <clears throat> your name to verify that you have done the five levels because we already have a waiting list and we cannot have more than 15 people because it's really, really hardcore. Uh, that was really, really interesting topic. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate it. Uh, we love when people find uh, the, uh, the work we do uh, interesting. Uh, we, believe it or not, we work really hard for the two lives that we have every week. And if anybody has any topic to suggest, anything okay. that you feel is interesting, please bring it. Um, this month, uh, uh, we uh, next Wednesday, we're going to have a surprise because it's... Uh, we, we, we're not going to say it, but has to do with people who make history and different piece, people like uh, Rosa Park. Um, oh, my God. Um, uh, I, I, I know. I know him. Martin I know Luther him. King. Martin, yes. We're going to talk about Rosa Park, Martin Luther King, and African-Americans who have made history and changed okay. things. And we're going to show the first reading. But again, this is for you because we do this craziness like every day until three o'clock in the morning for fun. Now we having fun with you and we share the information with you. Why? Because the best way to improve communication is knowing how people need to receive that information. What is your concept of that, Elba? Yeah, I think the same because at the end of the day, like what we need, communicate. And, and we need to communicate not like, like I need it, it's like you need it. So it's different. So my love, it's been an hour, like always. Uh, how many times we say we're gonna keep it under half an hour? God, oh, okay. we are the worst liars ever. <laughs> yeah. Because we even believe in our own lies. Yeah, that, that's not going to happen. No, I don't think no, so. It's no, it's not gonna happen. So next Friday, Let's cross finger because it's going to be 10 or 20 below zero for San Valentine. We're going to be talking about the story of Cupid and you own that to Elva. She brings the story of Cupid. We're going to talk about the five love languages. Uh, that's my craziness. And I like why we don't do it live. And we, yep. uh, so you're going to find the link in YouTube or any of the media that we are streaming. Mm -hmm. where you're going to find the link if you want to take the test before with your partner and understand what are the five love languages and how they express and how you can find it on the face because everything has to do with face reading we yeah. wait for you to see you on friday next friday the 12th 405 central standard time elva like always it's an honor to share the spotlight with you i hope to see you actually i'm going to see you before friday but officially for everybody you're going to see you friday yes bye everyone see you friday 4 p.m <laughs>